You are watching the Blockade Pinball Podcast. I am your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me, as always, halfway across the world, Jared Morgan. Hello, folks. How you going? It's, Long time uh, no speak. Right? It, it's kind of been mm. a hot minute. <laughs> yeah, it has. Indeed. Yeah. And as usual, once again, life interferes, but then there's also other things like the fact that we thought last week we were going to be able to talk about Zen's pinball announcement, and instead they delayed it by two days, so we weren't going to be able to really say anything, so what's the point of us coming on? No, you just have to listen to us talking about stuff and things, and you know, while that's fun and all, you're probably not really wanting to listen to stuff and things, you want to know stuff and things. And things, right. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, that, is, that is usually the, the ideal environment for, for what's going on. Um, mm. But meanwhile, so it's, 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 yeah, it's nighttime here. It's all dark in my room. It's a lovely, gloomy Saturday. Uh, and fortunately, I didn't have to work in the rain this time, but it was close. Um, but, yeah, not used to the rain. It's, you know, we like no. sun. Well, yeah, that's right. It's, it's sunny here. It's like, you know, 10.43 a.m. Uh, and it is, yeah, hot as anything. It's a, It was a 37 degrees Celsius uh, day yesterday, which is about 110 degrees Fahrenheit, I think. Okay, yeah, that's hot. Yeah, so what is that? <laughs> that's, that's like hot, hot, right? Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, around my house, it is rare to go that hot. Like maybe once a year we'll hit those kind of temps. Um, yeah, hitting a hundred is even like we'll have a stretch of that, but it's it's not often. Yeah, no, it's it's hot here at the moment. And of course, being hot, uh, it's terrible bushfires here in Australia at the moment. Like the basically the whole of the east coast is alight. Um, so well, yeah, what was, what was the thing that I read that it said that uh, koalas are now effectively on the extinction list? Essentially, yeah, it's it's actually not a lie. The koala population in Australia is just being decimated by the flyer. Um, that is and absolutely it's, crazy. That is, yeah, it's very very close to, to being extinct. Which is, uh, yeah, you'll be able to see it still at you know uh, Australia Zoo and stuff like that because they have koalas there. But in the wild, their population, I don't know what they're going to do about it. Whether they're going to try and rebreed them and put them back out there again. But yeah, they just got roasted essentially in the fires. And that's kind of the, the, the problem with eucalyptus trees in that they're, they're essentially alcohol. <laughs> yeah. They, and they go boom. Full of oil. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, if you have eucalyptus oil, yeah, that's that's from gum trees. So yeah. Yeah, they, they basically just go boom when this when the um, fire hits them. They go straight up. That that was um, my favorite factoid that I learned when I was uh, with my wife in Australia that um, Koalas are basically essentially drunk twenty four seven because of they the uh, <laughs> because of the eucalyptus. They're a classic Australian animal, mate. <laughs> it's like it's amazing they don't fall out of the tree, and yeah, be and become a drop bear. Um, yeah, well, yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know, I think partially that's where that name came from, but also it was just a scare, uh, scare tourists. But yes. Yeah. But yeah, it's bad. It's real bad. It's hot uh, and it's smoky, and the, the air quality is terrible. Like it's about on the like in Sydney at the moment, where the real bushfires are raging at the moment. Um, they've got air quality equivalent to you know Beijing on its worst Ooh, days. That ain't good. And and that's very rare. I mean, you know, we don't have wonderful air quality here in Australia, like with all the you know cars and stuff on the road. But we definitely don't have that sort of level of pollution. Um, so yeah, it's very bad here ah, but that that's your weather report from australia um well you know you, you, you talk weather. about weather when you don't know what to talk about wait we have exactly. things to talk about uh, we do know what to talk about though so <laughs> let's let's uh before we get into the the wild and crazy action although we'll just go ahead and say in case you've been living under a rock you don't know what volume five tables are ta-da it is it's Indiana Jones, and it's um... <laughs> Jared. You're Indiana spoiling Jones. our Volume 15 announcement. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, we got Totan. 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 And... Tales of the Arabian Nights, and uh, we've got No Good Gophers. A Pat Lawler favorite, and and to round it all out, we have got Chris. <laughs> Circus Voltaire, Jared lost it. 
No, I just wanted to give you a chance to say one. Oh, okay, yeah, which is a bally table. So gone is the all Williams are all bally things, which makes you kind of got to wonder, but we'll get into that wondering in a moment. First off, mm. hey, Jared, remember that uh, lovely pin cab we talked about last time? Yeah, that's right. The um, the Toy Shock digital pinball cabinet. And we speculated back then in that episode that, oh, no, that's definitely not affiliated with Farsight in any way, you know. That's, no, uh, yeah, why wouldn't that's no, no, There's no whatsoever. way. Guess what, folks? <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it is officially licensed Gottlieb product with Farsight doing the software for it. The build is the what looks to be a skinned version of the Android interface, um, and we, with all of its various pros and cons, cons mostly, um, <laughs> uh, and just with it, some new menu items to basically highlight: push this button, push this button, you know, to to go. Which yeah. I mean, I do got to say, hey, at least you made it idiot-proof. Uh, so. And it needs to be because it is. A th so we need to caveat what we're about to say with the following statement. The Toy Shock Digital Pinball is a toy. A toy, folks. Remember, it is a toy. It is not a digital pinball cabinet. Toy. Okay? <laughs> Good. For, now, for what is it? For the three ninety nine. So for $400, a uh, rather expensive toy, but a toy all the same. But, you know, it's a toy. So... Now that we've covered that off, let's get into what we know about it. It has a digital plunger. They've actually done a teardown. So I should probably, I decided to do something um, against the, my better judgment and go and have a look in Facebook. And oh, no. I decided, I decided to join the, the Toy Shock, official Toy Shock digital pinball fan page. And I'll say this from the outset, it's a really great group. The folks in that group are really friendly. Uh, it's not your normal Facebook derp that you get. The, everyone there is like really interested and really wants the product to succeed and is passionate about it. And it's actually really refreshing to be in a Facebook group like that, that um, people aren't being jerks. It's really good. So if I will try and link it in the show notes, but if you are at all interested in this particular Toy Shock digital pinball toy, then I would strongly suggest joining the Facebook group because it's it's quite fun. I'm actually still enjoying being in there, even though they've got got some sample stuff and they've they've kind of like worked out what it is and everything. But uh, so yes, so I joined the group. Um, uh, guy, one of the admins there um, called um, uh, Don. He is um, uh, he's he basically had the first um, one of these in um, America. And he did a live unboxing of it, set it up, and got it running, which allowed you to verify that, yes, it is Farsight software because it has Farsight on the um, the title page down the bottom um, as the uh, copyright owner. Which I'd just, like just like to ask this. Mm -hmm. uh, where's the pleasure in watching somebody spend 45 minutes building a cab or There's... anything in unboxing? I don't understand these unboxing videos because I'm just like... Oh come on! Do I really need to watch how you razor blade open plastic or you know whatever? <laughs> Look, you know it, it's different strokes for different folks. I did a lot of skipping through that video. I said, right, just get to the point and show me the bit that I wanted to see, which was the inside of it and the guts of it and the thing actually running and and someone playing it. Um, so yeah, I did skip a lot through that. You know, but it, some people love to see the thing being. I know, I know. It's, it's just one of those things that I don't under. I don't understand. It's strange. It is a little bit odd. But look, you know, whatever. So it looks like inside the cabinet, it's not much to it. There's obviously there's the arcade buttons that you see from the outside, the digital plunger. And then what looks to be, I think, I don't know if it's a proprietary board. I think you can actually buy these boards just generally from the Chinese market. Now, Toy Shock is actually headquartered in Shenzhen in uh china so it's obvious that they have access to this sort of like hardware um commercial off the shelf mini hardware but it's basically a little mini pc that's in there it's not like a a mini pc that you would buy from a shop it's just a board basically exposed um and then sort of attached to the bottom of the the cabinet 
Um, the board seems to have uh, an external power supply to it, which is sort of off to the side. Um, it also has the same power supply in the head, and I think that's just to be running the LED displays that they've got in the back box. So they're alphanumeric, alphanumeric LEDs, uh, displays in the top. Um, there's four of them. Um, when you put them together, it, like when, when it's running, uh, it works in the same way as a Gottlieb System 80B display, which is the ones used in Bone Busters and uh, Victory. Ew, those. So, those are the horrible displays, and they're also microscopic. No, no, they're, they're big. The thing <laughs> well, is, no, but I mean on those large. machines, they're they're tiny. They are very tiny, but these ones are big, and they, instead of being all sort of like um, squished together, like the ones um, would be in a in the system eighty B, um, the 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 displays are actually um, spaced apart, like player one, player two, player three, player four, just like you would see in a like a very first very early um belly uh not belly uh, gottlieb system 80 so uh they all it's pretty neat they actually do the they actually run the game code so uh they will display the display um as it's going through a track mode you'll see high scores scrolling across and all the information that you would normally see in a track mode for the game which is pretty neat um and apart from that nothing really that that more to report on the display side of things um the the screen apparently the biggest complaint that people have and it's the thing that will strike you the most when you see the product is the oversized bezel um that yeah the bezel is gigantic the it's it's colossal and it's deliberate um they're in apparently the company did some testing of the product and for kids they wanted to actually have a little bit of extra bezel around the outside so the kids wouldn't like have to touch the screen all the time and potentially damage the screen. Um, so they did opt for the larger bezel. Uh, there's people in the, the Toy Shock, the official Toy Shock um, page that are already thinking of modifying it. But there's a bit of a, an interesting thing about that in that the screen that they use is, is one of those OEM screens that you get from China. But... It's got a unusual connector on it. It's you can't just plug an HDMI cable into it. It's got a particular type of connector which I'd never heard of before. Um, so I think you'd need to find the monitor family that this monitor belongs to, get the next size up with the same connector, and I think you'd be right if you wanted to get a bigger monitor for it. But um, what Toy Shock and and certainly the um, the one up um, the little three quarter scale one up cabinet. Um, community seems to get is when they release a product like this initially it is really just a test run and then what they do is they iterate on the features and design after that uh, so I think that if you hold off and you wait for the next generation of these to come out which you know based on success you may or may not see um, if you if they do come out with a new iteration I'd say that bezel would be dramatically reduced in size um, there's not really much more to say about the build. Apparently, it's a really solid unit. It's quite heavy. It doesn't tilt very easily. Um, um, the The height of it is basically good for people who are about five foot two um, as a maximum height. If you're any taller than that, you're going to be um, wanting to sit down when you play it. Um, and that's not really a big problem anyhow because the, the tilt in it is a digital button uh, tilt so you don't have to shake the machine it's just push button um, so I guess that's not a really big thing but it's interesting when you put it next to uh, a one-up arcade cabinet it actually looks perfect like it looks really in scale obviously well that's what I figured it would be you know mm. if you had a whole collection of those one-up cabinets then throwing this in there I mean you could literally have a mini arcade <laughs> that's exactly like we've seen photos of some of the, the the folks games rooms with these three quarter scale cabinets they have one of each and um they put the pinball machine in there too and you know it actually looks it looks really good as a collection um but uh look so i guess if i was rounding out what i would think about the product i think that yep it's definitely a toy if you it's a very very cheap way of testing the waters right so if you have a kid that's interested in pinball 
and you were thinking about getting some sort of digital pinball set up um, and you weren't quite sure whether it was going to be worth investing the big dollars in it because, you know, we're talking for a proper one that, you know, for example, um, uh, our friend of the show, um, uh, who does all the very, very awesome YouTube videos of all the Zen pinball releases. Um, oh, Greg from Greg, Spaces Greg, Arcade. He's um, like his cabinets, you know, like thousands of dollars. So, you know, if you don't want to expend that, but you do want to test the waters and see if your kids be interested, then oh, this is a great product for that. Like testing the waters with this product is cheap. Um, there's 12 tables in it. Um, you know, it's uh, if I was a kid and if I was young enough and uh, I, I wanted to get into pinball, I'd be pretty stoked with this present on the Christmas tree for sure. Um, yeah. I, too, watched a little bit of the video. I think I sped right to the end, <laughs> though, just to find yeah. out. And I know that the positives on it was that the guy said that the flipper response, he didn't notice any lag, so yeah. that was positive. Negative was the plunger did have lag and only has about an inch and a half of pull total. Yeah, very, very small travel on the plunger, yeah. That's one of the things the community is looking at modding immediately. <laughs> we have a different plunger in it. Um, my question also, though, with the monitor is, what's the angle of view like? Um, well, it's interesting you say that. It looks like, uh, and Jay William in the in the chat has actually said that the the views have actually been tweaked for the cabinet as well, so they're a little bit f like flatter, like cabinet mode would be. Um, uh, and apparently, uh, Jay William also said that one of the Farsight devs mentioned on their um, Pimble Arcade stream that they had worked on it. Uh, and that's what they did to make it a little bit more compatible to the cabinet. I think you misunderstand what kind of view I'm talking about. What I'm talking what? about looking at the screen, and if you move too far to one side or the other, does the color diminish? Does the res you know? Oh, is it, you mean the is right? It, the, what, is it, what do they call those IFT screens or whatever that uh, you can get? Really, doesn't matter what angle you're standing; it still stays. The view the, angle uh, is wonky. Yeah, yeah. Or if you put sunglasses on, everything disappears. Right. 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 Yeah. I don't know. I think. Um, I'm trying to remember if they covered that or not. I think I'm not sure. I can't remember if they did cover it. But again, this seems to be one of those scenes where, when they were in the video and they were like, like filming it, they actually were going around the whole cabinet and taking shots of it um, while the game was running from multiple angles, and it didn't seem like there was any sort of filtering going on. Okay. Um, so it looks like it could be all right. The panel could be good. Yeah. Right. The other thing that I noticed with the video play and this, <laughs> it's amazing how much you can see the ball speed compared to Zen. It oh, just yeah. it, it just looks underwater. It's it's kind of crazy. It's so floaty. But we do know that that era of Gottlieb, they they were pretty floaty. No, I mean, but I'm talking about it's that unnatural farsight floaty that we. Didn't have much of a problem with didn't have much of a problem with until we started playing Zen. <laughs> yeah, the, the frictionless fr floaty. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely it's definitely got the far side physics still on on those um, got leaps. Um, but you know, it is what it is. It's four hundred bucks. So, it is. Yeah, I mean, interestingly it, though, you, you look back and you when far side said, "Oh no, we're definitely still working on pinball." And this is it. So. <laughs> That's what they were doing for the last yeah. uh, year. More. Maybe. More, yeah. <laughs> Maybe. So well, it, yeah, who knows? Interestingly, like, there's been a lot of... Uh, a, <laughs> I, I have been able, you know, with our six years plus of, of institutional knowledge with this particular product, I've been able to uh, dissolve a fair few myths pretty quickly in <laughs> that Facebook forum <laughs> about um, what can and is not possible at all um, with this product, and uh, I guess that was kind of helpful for the community because um, you know. The, Let me the guess. Community... They're, they're, they're going, "Oh, I want full motion video on the back, or you're, you know, be able to project the, the the back box on another monitor, right?" Yeah, it's like, well, yeah, for maybe one thousand five hundred dollars. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, but you know, this is you know, this is just a classic thing. People want want as much as they can get from a consumer product. That's just yeah. human nature. And, you know, that's fine. But, you know, there is there, there were some things like about licensing. There was constantly going, oh, you know, 
maybe they can cut a deal with uh, with Belly Williams to get the Williams star. I said, that's an absolute no. <laughs> no, negative, not even a hope in hell that that's going to be happening with this product. <laughs> it, it's kind of funny. It's why I can't watch a lot of people's reviews of Zen tables that aren't mm. us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because the amount of false speculation or uh, a bad info that gets put out there as opposed to our years of knowledge of what is going on is just like I sit there and I just wind up screaming at the screen going no yeah. it's not that you know <laughs> yeah we are that we are those classic comic book guys you know from the Simpsons like no that's not how it works you know worst yeah. video ever <laughs> <laughs> that's right and it's a curse of having like lived and breathed this for so long that you know we are kind of you know we know too much and you know that's why you've listened to us hopefully because we do know too much about these products so um yeah so it should be interesting like you said if it's if it's successful will uh will they do the the, the other 12 tables that Williams I heard that will Williams that uh Farsight has with Gottlieb well um, it did say in the product description up on the Walmart website that they're is support for alphanumeric and DMD tables that was on the product sheet. But of course this first round is only alphanumeric and just numeric as well. Yeah. So, so I don't know at this stage, but I think it will depend on how well the product sells if they decide to do any sort of DMD and you can guarantee that whacking a DMD in there of any description, whether it's an LCD screen or whatever, uh, it's not going to be $400 folks. Nope, that's going to jack the uh, price right back up. Even with OEM and building it from China, I would speculate that you know you'd be looking six ninety nine plus, maybe, um, depending. That's on, a hard pill to swallow when the whole market is a, a particular price point, and when it's just got leaves. Yeah, and you know the 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 got leaves that the that are in the the pinball arcade collection. There's, they're all right, but you know they're they're not worth. I don't think forking out that much money for a dedicated cabinet just to play them on. When you can go and set up, basically, I think the one piece of information that was in that form, which I think is definitely worth knowing. I don't know whether it was in the fan form, whether it was in the pinball arcade fans forum or the um, digital pinball fans forum. I think it was the latter. I think someone was talking about the the efforts they went to actually set up a digital pinball cabinet and the the amount of rabbit holing that they essentially did to get to the point they were happy. And I think the the decision they came up with at the end was it's actually just better just to have a, a monitor that's um, mounted somehow uh, in the orientation of a pinball machine cabinet and, and just like set up a, a box with some flipper buttons on it and not go too hardcore with a cabinet because you you just you go down the rabbit hole too much and and it doesn't really add any extra value to the experience if you do um, so that's interesting so you know just having like a screen that you can tilt and sort of have it on an arm maybe and like have a controller box like you've got your 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 pin cabinet controller there have something like that, you know, that's a much better solution than actually making a full machine. Yeah, um, because you also fall into the trap of of once you do that on the little pin cap, you're not going to be happy with only these 12 tables. You're now going to want everything else, and that's going to lead you into basically, and I <laughs> I know this because a uh, another friend of the show, um, I'm storing some of his stuff right now while he's in a, a transitional move, and yeah. one of those things is he has one of the one-up machines. It's the Street Fighter II machine. And so that's sitting oh, yeah. in my house right now. He gutted the thing and basically installed his own computer. And so now it has, yeah. and, and wrote his own software, all this stuff. So it's got all these things in it. Um, but there's very little left other than the cabinet itself that he didn't replace. <laughs> and the buttons. Even the buttons. No, he replaced the buttons. He replaced oh, wow. them. He replaced the buttons with uh, light up LED buttons. I don't know if he changed out the joysticks or not. Um, right. That might have stayed 
but literally it's not running on none of the switches, uh, the on-off switch or anything. He installed his own on-off switches. He installed pinball switches. Um, oh, wow. Your know, buttons on the side. It, it's, yeah, very little has remained the same. <laughs> And that's the thing, like, you, you can go, people going, oh, you know, this has got heaps of room for putting mods in and stuff. I'm going, yeah, but why would you? Like, it's it's three-quarter size. Uh, look, it's good from a space-saving perspective, but, you know, I guess if you needed a shell and you didn't want to go and buy a kit, you can buy these kits all pre-done. Like, they've yeah. got a kits that you can, I'm sure you can buy them in the US, you certainly can here where you can just get a standard size pinball machine shell sent to you in the post. Um, so if you really want a cabinet, you can get one of those relatively easily now. Um, so I, I just don't, I, I don't know if that's the approach I'd take if I wanted to create a digital pinball cabinet from this thing. Yeah. So it's certainly the one up arcade cabinets. They're, they're, you know, reasonable size. Um, and they are almost like a, a full size cabinet. So, and all you really have to do with those, and they sell them. They sell a little box that you can put the whole things on, and it brings it back up to pretty much standard it, height. Yeah, it's a little riser. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I've seen those. So, so I mean, the know. screen is still small, and the real estate width wise is still small, but at least you don't have to crouch while playing. Exactly right, and that's that's a problem. Uh, people are thinking of putting legs on this thing, but um, on the pinball machine. But which guess yeah, how much it, legs are, folks? They're about yeah. $75 to start. <laughs> well, you can get Gottlieb legs from the pinball resource for $13.50 US a leg. Um, so, you know, you've got, you know, $52 there. Then you've got your shipping um, to domestic US. Which and, is yeah. going to be, like I said, you're right about 70 bucks or so. And then there's, if you, if these things ever come to Australia, which they probably will end up coming here apparently in 2020, they're due to be in Australia. Um, then if you want to put higher legs on them in Australia, you are looking at $350 for a pair of legs in Australia, Holy because crap. that's how much it costs to ship them from pinball resource. <laughs> as I found out recently, um, and I'm not going to be getting replacement legs from my got leaves anytime soon, <laughs> uh, because that's ridiculous. So there yeah. you go. Um, I mean, the, the question on the, uh, uh, the boards here is just about asking, is there a controller box that's for sale? And yeah, I don't know. Uh, building one, it, it it wasn't hard, that hard to build mine, and I kind of went nuts on it. Um, mm -hmm. But if you want to build the basic, just cheap version, <laughs> basically the way that, uh, that Jeremy Williams set his up, um, you can certainly do that and... Uh, it, it's Get not a control it pretty quick. Yeah, it, it's not a very difficult uh, process uh, to handle. Uh, the only thing that was difficult for my end was I was like, but I want more buttons and I want this. And then, you know, I added a ton of stuff. So, yeah. So he uh, increased the scope dramatically. Like you said, um, you go down the rabbit hole really fast. <laughs> and that was that was just on a pinball controller. Think about what would happen if you actually had a pinball machine that was trying to like you oh, dual yeah. screen. And yeah, because yeah, because now I'm like yeah, now you're dealing with the actual computer that's going in there and what software to, you know, manage all of the tables and are you gonna put solenoids in it and all this other stuff. And look, VP cabs is charging what they're charging for a reason. <laughs> yeah, it, that's right, because it's really expensive to make one of these and make it work right. And make it rock solid so that it can handle, you know, actual play. Mm. And, you know, the the neat thing about the, the full-size cabinets, and this is where you pay the money, is that everything is preloaded, you switch it on, and it works. And it often has arcade games in it, too. So you can actually play arcade games up in the back box, pinball machine games on the big monitor, so you actually have more of a, like a, I guess it's, it has more utility than something that's dedicated just for pinball only. Yeah. But, you know, uh, mm, yeah, expensive hobby. And like even <laughs> digital pinball is expensive. Come on. like. So, so let's, let's <laughs> shift gears and, and go into what uh, everybody probably wanted to hear about anyway.
Although they yeah. already have seen stuff. Um, <laughs> let's talk about yeah. Volume 5 that uh, yes. Zen has dropped. Um, I'm just going to say this. First impressions when I threw this thing in. A, look phenomenal. Uh, yes. There's no doubt about it. This is so, All three of them are such an upgrade over what Pinball Arcade had just because, okay, no good gophers for one is one of the worst defenders when it comes to not being able to read a single insert, especially on that sand trap insert, which I was like, what does that say? Um, yeah, on that spinning wheel, there was just nothing there. Yeah, you couldn't read anything on the spinning wheel and everything. This version, it's all crystal clear. It's beautiful. You can read it. it is. Even when it's lit, It's you can just see everything. So that part of it is wonderful. Then you move over to Circus Voltaire, and... It has a wonderful lighting package going on on it. Um, just really vibrant. The, when the neon glows, it you can see the light cascading on everything. It's uh, just gorgeous to look at. And it's everything that you were hoping for, the most part, on <laughs> Circus Voltaire. I'll get into my most part action. And then mm. you get uh, uh, Tales of the Arabian Nights, which, again, that was Farsight's first volley the first four tables it was one of the first four tables that they released and so in most desperate need of an art upgrade and here you have it everything just looks phenomenal um all the ramps yeah. look spectacular um again the, it, it's just like shiny jewels going on so the look of these tables is just Spot tremendous on. yeah yeah um then you get into the added enhancements um, I'll and say, wow. yeah, far out. <laughs> so I started looking at no good gophers first and no good gophers. Basically the enhancement is you have a golfer on the table. Um, who I think looks remarkably like deep, but I, I don't quite. Well, I mean, that. deep is doing all the, uh, the motion the capture anyway. Yeah. And that's uh, his voice for sure. Like it's, it's definitely <laughs> deep's voice. Um, <laughs> but, uh, it, it's. Zen has found this nice mode that they're in now where the animations aren't too obtrusive, but they're actually adding something to the Value game, hopefully. To the package. Yeah. Yeah. And in this case, they've captured the humor of No Good Gophers really well. The golfer is quite funny just in his reactions. Um, yeah. And it's very Caddyshack. It's very yeah. nice, which is essentially what No Good Gophers is. It's a nod to, it's an unlicensed Caddyshack. Oh, yeah, completely. And, and yeah. I think my <laughs> when you lock a ball, a collection of balls drops onto the apron. You lock another ball, even more balls. When you finally get multi-ball, a missile from the golf cart that's been parked on the other side launches, hits the golf ball scatter everywhere at the exact same time as the balls launch onto the table <laughs> in real multi-ball, which is it's, just so a, it's a little bit chaotic, but it's also rather cool. It's a it's a wonderful effect that they did on that one. So yeah. that one, the animation's great just from the standpoint of uh, uh, adding humor to the table. Then you move on to Circus Voltaire. Um, I don't really know if I dig on... They basically put the, the ringmaster. Master. Yeah. Um, it, Unfortunately, he reminds me a lot of the clown that's on uh, Cyclone. Yeah, Pennywise. <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, he remind, he, what he really reminds me of is uh, any of you Buffy fans. Um, Spike? He, no, not Spike. It was... Uh, oh, great. I got to ask. <sighs> Lorne. His name was Lorne. He was the uh, nightclub owner of the basically the karaoke bar. He was always singing. Um <laughs> That's what he, that's what he kind of looks like. But here's what is cool: the ringmaster uh, head that rises out of the table. They've actually animated that a little. His eyes move. His mouth sometimes moves. Way cool. I like that. Yeah, that's and very the, nice. And the most important thing that they added <laughs> it was the ability right off the bat. Hey, what color neon do you want? Yes, you select it from way before you start the ball. It's lovely. And of course, when you what depending on what color you change the neon to, that changes what color the ball in the menagerie is, um, which is indeed how it was in the table. Uh, yeah, that's right. So, mm, here's my gripe, and Jared's familiar with this. Uh, mm. Just like Attack from Mars, when you play neon multi ball, 
the whole point of the mode was that everything goes out on the on the table, all the lights go out except for the neon. The neon. And the neon pulses, and it makes the mode more challenging visually because you can't necessarily see the balls. Just like in Stro Multiball on Attack from Mars, where the whole point is, I mean, it's an easy mode otherwise that you can mm. go on for a long time if you can actually see the balls. But if you can't see the balls, then that's the whole point of it. And the room doesn't go dark. And I really Enough. wish yeah. that they would just allow us to flick a switch and turn off all the lights in the room so that only the table <laughs> is lit. Yep. Which I know that you don't like that, Jared, but it's on certain tables I want that. I want that option. So I'm not even Look, talking I, about... I could care less I could about just, a light. Like, turn it off just for that mode. And if I could turn it off just for strobe, yes. But if I had to keep it off all the time, no. Yeah, like, and I would even I would even say if you can't turn it off just for that, which I don't understand why you couldn't, but if you aesthetically don't like that, I don't even need a light slider. Just allow me the opportunity to turn off the ambient light completely, yeah. and I'll play in dark. I'm yeah. not going to play it often. I probably will play it only ten percent of the time, but I want that option. Yeah, yeah. I look. I wouldn't have a problem with that. Yeah. So anyway, that's that's with Circuits of Voltaire. Um, and then over on... Totan. Totan. Oh, my God. The animation wow, They've gone to help. town. On they've gone table. to town, and they help you play. Like, and, and you're going, what do you mean they help you play? Okay, so you know how there's the, what do they call it, star capture? Where the little... Shooting uh, stars. Shooting stars, where the little plunger shoots up to capture, trap the ball, if it was in, maybe going to go in the out lane. I never knew if those things were lit. Here, all of a sudden, a little animation of a shooting star goes and lands on the tail and tells you what side is actually lit. Yeah. Nice. Wonderful. Very um, nice little visual trick there. When the genie hurls fireballs at you, the ball turns into a fireball, which is fantastic because then you know when the mode ends, because when the mode ends, the ball goes back to normal. <laughs> um, yes. there's, just, there's just all sorts of little visual cues like that on the table, and it really I just appreciated what they did with that because I was just like, oh, I'm not struggling to figure out what's going on. I understand completely what's going on. Yeah, it's it's made a huge difference to your enjoyment of that game. It certainly has for me. Like I never played Totan on, on the Pinball Arcade. It was just, number one, it was just way too easy. And number two, it just looked gross. Um, yeah. Because it was the first the first batch, and it never got any attention, and it desperately needed it, because it's a good game when you get into it. Oh, and it's, one of, those, it's, it's one of those tables that, because of the color scheme of it, and the lighting package... It's got to be sharp. It's got to be sharp, and it's got to have... That way you can get the contrast, you can get the layers that are actually a, a part of the table. And it really does have a great art package on it, but you couldn't see it in Pimble Arcade. No. Um, it's well-themed. The thing, the other thing I really like about um, the uh, the Totan table is that um, the the scimitar, which is the the ball launch, the the sword basically um, that you you launch off, actually holds the gems when you earn them, uh, when holds the jewels. Correct. When you actually earn them, and it, they actually like f sort of float up and slam into the scimitar and like etch themselves into the scimitar, and it looks awesome. Which, again, and, you'd no longer have to be, wait, I missed that on the DMD. You can actually visually just see it on the physical table now. Yeah. This is the sort of digital enhancements that I think we were, we were hoping for when we were originally speculating um, about what they could do with these digital enhancements. This is the level that I think they're at now. And we're seeing, we're essentially getting our dreams realized about what we want to see with the with the digital enhancements, it's great. Yeah, they're precisely. Not gimmicky. They're actually they're actually so well integrated into the game that they they almost are compelling enough that you you don't want to play the game without them. Yeah, to me, it's like, it's kind of like what they did with Safecracker, where I won't play Safecracker without the enhancements now. No, exactly. Um, moving on to then the physics of things, because all three of these tables had issues in uh, TPA. Uh, mm. Again, no good gophers. The main thing is the ball no longer lives in the pop bumpers. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's so much a relief. It actually gets out of there pretty quick, which is great. Yeah. What's funny is I've actually had the ball get stuck in the pop bumpers now. 
Oh, really? I haven't had that. Yep. I had it happen twice where I had to nudge in order to get the ball out. But it's, yeah, it's not just this rattle fest. The, the ball lives there. Um, the other thing is that the ramp is kind of brutal to try and hit. Yeah, they're not easy anymore. Uh, no. They're, they're hard. The other thing that I like on, on the subject of ramps is the hole in one shot is actually a variable shot now. You don't have to hit that one point on the ramp for it to always make the hole in one. Because it oh, was okay. very much it was very much railroaded physics in um, in TPA um, for for that shot because it was leaving the table and they had to literally plot the arc of the ball into that area of of the um, play field. So, and what's interesting it, is that Zen has this exact feature, and I think it's Shaman their table. Mm-hmm. And it's ugly <laughs> on Shaman. It's not a cool shot to try and take. And they've learned so much in terms of where this is that I'm like, hey, but why don't you go back to Shaman and, and fix that now? <laughs> and do that now, yeah. 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 Um, the, the other thing with No Good Gophers is that... Yeah, I think the main thing is that the vacuum ramps are gone and the 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 trajectory of the ball when it goes does the loops is not nearly as predictable as what it was in TB. So those yes. it just makes it just makes the whole table so much more enjoyable because again, the ball is wild. That's the ball that's, is wild. It is pinball. That's what we yeah. want. Um moving yeah. on to Circus Voltaire, that's the one that everybody was most concerned about because it at times, depending on where you were playing it, you know, what console or whatever. Uh, that one's very problematic with that. I think had them. That's the table that balls flew off the table the most on, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think you're right there. It was a, you know, there was a lot of able action. Well, there was a lot of off play field action happening on that one. Yeah. Um, and then there, it also has that very evil horseshoe uh, shot that sends the ball very close straight down the middle. And yeah. that was never a, a, a good time. And then there was the outlines. Yeah, the were... outlines were hard to gauge on Pimble Arcade. Okay? Like sometimes you would be fine. And sometimes it was just a drain fest. And there was no real rhyme or reason to why. Right. Um, they're, they're a lot better on, um, even with the um, the classic arcade physics on, on Zen, um, set to arcade mode, not tournament, that they're actually fine they they behave really nicely so yeah. so it, 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 well, it's i guess they behave consistently is the thing right right mm. so i mean it's it's not saying i'm not saying that it's less challenging it's that now it's challenging on a realistic level um you don't it, feel like you're being gamed when you play it like you actually right. feel like you are playing pinball yeah yeah um i do want to highlight the boom balloon on oh yes is great because they actually put a balloon inside, and every time the ball hits, the balloon pops and then blows back up inside the pop bumper. It's a nice, nice touch that they did that. Really nice. Yep. Very, very nice touch. Um, um, and then switching over to Toten, uh, that was one that very similar to Theater of Magic, where the outer loops were. It was weird trying to hit them because it didn't seem like a natural trajectory off the the flipper. Previously. Yeah, they, are not, they were an unnatural feeling shot. Yeah, yeah. And now it's the ball is going where you wanted it to go, just like it did with Theater of Magic when Zen did that. So that was what I was mm-hmm. really looking forward to. Uh, one area of contention happens to be with the ramps on uh, Tales of Arabian Nights because it seems like. In order to complete a mission, you can't just launch it up the ramp and have it plop down the middle. You got to have it do the full arc and go all the way around into that that ring. And there's a lot of balls that come rolling back down at you. <laughs> yeah, and we we brought it up in in the beta, and um, yeah, Zen's 100% acknowledged that, and Deep is looking at tuning tuning the ramp a bit more because it's I I was doing clean shots up that ramp every single time, and they were all rejecting. So I think uh, what's I think what's happening, this goes back to uh, Medieval Madness with the dragon ramp. And yes. I think there's too much friction on the ball spin. And it's yes. it, 
the material that whatever they've assigned friction on those ramps is got too much grip and it needs to be instead of slick so that no matter how much that ball's spinning, it's just going to go whoop and, and keep on yeah, going it around. It's not affected essentially, yeah. Right, which they fixed it on... Uh, medieval. On Medieval. And I think they also wound up fixing it eventually on Roadshow. Uh, yes, because I so, think it was the same problem too. Yeah, so I think that's the same thing that's going to be going on here. It just needs a little uh, little baby tweak and, and that'll be the end of that. Yeah, it'll be fine. Like by the time it gets released, for I'm very confident that'll be resolved. So here comes the question, though. This mm-hmm. is what I was saying. With you got two William stables and now a Bally table. Does that mean that we are not going to be seeing Jackbot, Who Done It, and Cactus Canyon? I already stated Cactus Canyon, very rare table, hard to find, probably even harder to find in Europe. Uh, oh, I don't know they'd have too much trouble getting access to it from the um, partnership they have with the Pinball Museum over there. They'd surely have one. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. <laughs> like I said, mm. it, it wasn't exactly... Considering it's one of those tables that goes for $12,000, mm. um, you know, I that would be the other thing is, is, is anybody even selling it and trading it? You know, Farsight basically said that they lucked into even having that come up for sale, which is why they bought it, paid a boatload more than they ever wanted to, but they couldn't pass up the opportunity. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Um, It'll be so, interesting to see. Yeah, so so there's that one that's questionable. And then you've got Who Done It, which um, I, I don't I, I really have no emotion towards Who Done It. I could care less about the table. So I don't know if that's just kind of the same thing where it's just kind of like, well, does anybody want this? I don't know. Do we go for it? Uh, and then the third table, of course, is Jackbot, which is all casino, which is that going to screw with the ESRB? Maybe. There's a lot of questions there that uh, I guess will only be answered over time. Yeah. So Mm. um, there's where, hey, you want to start your speculation. Uh, We'll know soon enough because if the next tables announced are alphanumerics, (laughs) I'm going to say probably kiss those three tables goodbye. Yeah. I I think... The only reason why I want to see Cactus Canyon in the collection uh, is is to just play a better visual representation of that table because certainly, oh, there there is there's, there's nothing to like on the Pinball Arcade version. It is just a a, a blobby mess. Well, and it's um, also lit all wrong. That was my whole complaint about it. Yeah, it's just lit horribly. But I just really wish, and I'm pretty sure this is outside the scope of what's possible. Geez, if Cactus Canyon continued, would be lovely to see on that. Just, Absolutely. Just as a, I just oh, think that Zen's going to have to program it themselves. Probably. Because it, yeah. But, you know, that is just, uh, it would just be wonderful to see that that sort of thing. And, but, you know, when Brighter Pinball comes around, BOP 2.0, yes, please. Oh, um, that changes right? the game 100%. It's a completely different game when that ROM's installed. Yeah, so that, that would be... I'd love to see some sort of arrangement cut there, if possible. But not holding my breath for that, because that is outside the scope of license. Yeah. Uh, hold on, mm. I'm going to check something, Jared, because it seems like your screen size shrank. <laughs> it's teeny tiny, It went Jared. teeny tiny. What the heck happened there? Why did you get all small like that? Hmm. No, that's interesting. Roboloco in the chat says Zacos said they will probably do Cactus Canyon if someone will lend it to them. Uh, that was uh, mentioned during the new pack stream. Okay. So thanks for that, Roboloco. Yeah. It, so yeah, your your suspicions are correct there. Yeah. Um, I'm going to smaller gonna, again. I'm going to. Tr- I know. I'm going to. I'm going to try and uh, fix this live. Oh, I I did you down now here. Let me hit this button and then I'm going to come over here. Down the rabbit hole. And, Speed it down uh, the rabbit uh, hole. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, there, there! Uh, oh, uh, get big, Jared. In big and in big and in big. Whoa! Yeah. <laughs> no, that's too big. Too big, Jared. <laughs> Whoa! You, you had it, and then it snapped. No, it was, it's, it's see. This is this is fun, folks. A little live, uh, live fun live. with Jared's video. An um, open broadcast studio. Yes. Yeah, right. 
Oh my gosh, this has got to be. And I, of course, <laughs> there we go. Okay, lock it. I, I can't do this without uh, without his screen up. So yeah, you get to see it live. Yeah, it wasn't that fun. <laughs> it's good. It's good. I yeah. just did not. I'm, I'm sitting there watching you. Do you talk? And all of a sudden, your screen goes. Jik, 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 jik. I'm like, what? What? <laughs> uh, uh, it's 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 fun. It's yes, fun. It OBS is fun. is fun. So anyway, uh, those tables release in on Tuesday, I believe. A couple of days, yeah. Yeah, uh, y'all are going to want to get them for sure. They're what rather a great bright. way. What a great way to round out the decade. Yeah. All right. And I don't. You know, there's all of a sudden. <laughs> there's a little blowback against uh, basically you might say it started with Greg from Spacey saying Zen lock the physics they're great uh, with Monster Bash uh, is what he when he said that and some people are saying oh but they slowed the ball down that's not good um, I don't have a problem with it personally because if you've ever played a real pinball machine and if you watched Greg's video when he used the marble instead of a pinball, you'll understand a thing or two that what we've been seeing in digital pinball is not real. The ball does not move that fast. Um, mm. Oh, no, you got giant again. What the heck is going on? Big Jared. <laughs> <laughs> Big head Jared. <laughs> All right, hold on, folks. Here we go again. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to correct this. This is just ridiculous. Good Lord, that like went to triple size embiggenment mm. embiggenment <laughs> oh my god all right i wish Make there was the australian large i don't know why there's not australian. just a uh <laughs> log it uh there should be a you know just like your expand to fit monitor and i should yeah, have that snap. button yeah snap. yeah snap to fit yeah. all right you just need to lock all panes or something i, I did <laughs> i've pushed the lock button you know I don't Push know. it harder with conviction this time. <laughs> <laughs> right, I don't know it. if I've told the story before, but it reminds me. So back when I had my uh, Apple, t- what it, t- Apple SE, so it was a Mac SE, I guess that was what it was. You know, the old mm. all-in-one unit with a little nine-inch screen, black and white. Um, wow. Yeah, uh, so I had set it up, you know, with the, it was all new to me. And hey, look, there is sound so that you can have it when something goes wrong, the sound pops up. And so whenever you press the button and it was not a good command, basically, the computer would go, spam? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> and I thought that I took great amusement in that because I love Python, right? And it, it used to go, do not or does not compute, but that took too long. Um, yeah. So one day my mom's using the computer and all of a sudden I hear coming from the other room, spam, 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 spam. (laughs) And I'm like, quit hitting the same button. (laughs) She's like, well, I thought that if I just kept on hitting it, it would know what I wanted to do. I'm like, it's a computer. (laughs) (laughs) That's fantastic. Oh. It's like people at the crosswalk. They're just like, if I push this enough times, it'll know that I really, it's really, awesome. really want to cross the street right now. Yeah. So, anyway, crazy. Uh, I think we're done. So, we done. We are done. So yeah, folks, <laughs> just uh, you're gonna be happy. Ride with the physics. They're good. When you go out and play pinball for real, compare. Uh, be aware of the ball speed, and you're gonna see that the ball usually moves a lot slower on a real machine. Zen does have plenty of variables going on. We're now splitting hairs. And my point is I would much rather have all the back catalog matching right now and just move forward with now because it's good. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I think we thought it was now... good. We thought it was good when volume one released. Yeah. It's fantastic right now. Don't tweak it anymore. It's fine. No. Just gold, gold master that one and lock it in and roll it back yeah. um, to all the other tables. And that will then become the Zen physics. Exactly. Like, that is it. And then maybe they can apply those physics to Zen originals. Oh, the tables. Yeah. Right. yeah like aliens. <clears throat> no. aliens. Yeah. Aliens. Um, <laughs> all right. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to call it right now and say right. there ain't going to be a podcast next week because I already know nah. my work schedule. It's, it's full. Um, but. We do want to hear your feedback. So by all means, hit us up right there on the Twitters 
and uh, let us know what you think and if there's anything that you want us to address in the show next time just drop us tell a message us. Yeah, tell us yeah it works wonders um also make sure you go check out the website which is blockadepinball.com slash episodes because there is where you'll find all past episodes plus Jared will drop in show notes as well as uh, links to things that we talk about as he likes to um yes. And am I, what am I forgetting, Jared? Um, well, the next time we speak, there's most likely going to be talk about stuff and things. There you go. What more can you want? All right. Until next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.